there's only one diet ever in medical history that's been proven to not just slow down, prevent, or stop heart disease, but actually reverse heart disease. Since the dawn of refrigerators, freezers, improvement in cross-country transportation, industrialized agriculture, and the explosion of fast and convenience foods, we've seen a huge increase in preventable death and disease in America. More than two in every three adults are considered to be overweight or obese. One in three children are considered to be overweight or obese. Studies show that poor diets are undoubtedly linked to obesity and chronic disease, including diabetes, certain cancers, heart disease, high blood pressure, and stroke. The smoking gun largely belongs to fast and processed foods. Our delicious but poisonous fare is filled with preservatives and saturated fat. These choices are high calorie foods with low nutritional value. Loaded with fat, salt, and sugar, they are both lethal and addictive. Couple this high calorie, high fat diet with our increasingly inactive and sedentary lifestyle and we see the problem. The US has the highest rate of obesity in the world, which is linked to many fatal health problems including 70% of heart disease, over 30% of cancers, and over 80% of type 2 diabetes. Studies and books have shown that diets consisting of mostly plant foods, fresh fruits, vegetables, and whole grains can prevent and even stop several diseases in their tracks, including heart disease, diabetes, and certain cancers. In his eye-opening viral video uprooting the 15 leading causes of death, Dr. Michael Greger of NutritionFacts.org reveals that 14 of the 15 leading causes of death in America can be prevented or reversed with a healthy, balanced, plant-based diet. He shared with us his revelations and advice on living and eating healthier. Dairy is actually the number one source of saturated fat in the United States. Of all the important things we need to do in our diet, increase fiber consumption, decrease our consumption of cholesterol, saturated fat, and trans fats, well, if you're gonna decrease saturated fat, the number one thing you would do is take dairy out of your diet. The public often believes that cow's milk is a dietary need for calcium and for vitamin D. Cup for cup, one cup of cooked collard greens has a whopping 357 milligrams of calcium. That's significantly more than the calcium found in cow's milk. The same vitamin D that we get from cow's milk, we can get from sunlight and it's easily acquired from getting 15 to 20 minutes of sun we're the only species really to drink milk after weaning and then to drink milk of another species. I mean, it's kind of, you know, it's just, it can't, it's hard to imagine something for, more kind of unnatural about someone's diet. Sure, dairy um, has a lot of calcium in it, but you know, why not get calcium from healthy plant sources like dark green leafy vegetables? Then um, the kind of baggage that comes along with the calcium there is the fiber and the folate and the phytonutrients, the iron, all this stuff that's really lacking in dairy. You know, food is a package deal. You can't, yes, there's iron in, in meat, uh, in beef, but you can't get the, you know, you, uh, you know, Burger King says you can have it your way. We can't be like, yeah, I like the iron, but yeah, hold the saturated fat, hold the cholesterol, hold the hormones, all that. No, it all comes together. So you can't get the calcium in dairy without getting um, some of these things you don't want. You can't get the iron meat, can't get the protein in pork, can't get the, you know, we have to think of food as kind of holistic. It's a whole food, so the best place to get it is where you're getting all the other nutrients. Um, so we're getting plant-based sources of protein and calcium and iron, really the best sources because of all the other wonderful things that come along with it. So people have this sense that oh my god, I'll never eat X again. You know, they just can't wrap their head around it. And I try to think, no, 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 don't think of it that way. You know, just give it a try. Right? Give it. A so uh, Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine has this wonderful 21-day kickstart program where it says, look, give it three weeks, right? And see what happens to your health. And many people 
you know, they go in skeptical, but after three weeks, they just feel so much better. Their numbers are better. Maybe their blood pressure is better. Maybe their arthritis is better. Maybe their migraines are better. Um, they just feel so much better that they wouldn't go back if you paid them. I mean, you know, I mean, it's not a matter. I mean, nothing tastes as good as healthy feels. Do you know that most doctors don't know about nutrition? They're not trained on nutrition in medical school? Doctors don't know a lot about nutrition because they weren't taught nutrition. I mean, if you're not taught something, how, how are they going to pick it up? And now, look, if you have a practice, full-time practice, you, you, it's hard to learn on your own. So if someone didn't teach you, you don't have time to learn it, how would you know otherwise? Um, and, and the reason it's not taught in medical school, for a variety of reasons, they don't test for it on the board. So if you don't test for it, you want high pass rates. Um, a lot of the money that supports medical education is from kind of the big drug companies that just, you know, you know, the, the you know, the broccoli lobby isn't taking taking doctors out to lunch and giving them Caribbean vacations, you know, to prescribe their latest fruit. Um, uh, you know, so, uh, and then in continuing medical, after you become doctor, um, you still need hundreds of hours of continuing medical education credits. This education, very little nutrition, it's paid for mostly by the drug companies. Um, and so you're not learning it during med school, you're not learning it after. And so they're just ignorant. In fact, there's even a study in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition that pitted doctors versus patients in terms of in a simple test of nutrition knowledge, like 10 true-false questions, super easy. Guess who won? And patients, people off the street, know more about nutrition than their doctors, yet people to continue to go to doctors for questions about healthy eating advice. And what their doctors are telling them may be killing them. Until doctors learn more about nutrition, they're advising you about your diet may be physician-assisted suicide. These folks are calling themselves vegan, vegetarian, um, flexitarian, those are people who are vegetarians sometimes, or pescatarian, people who don't eat any other animal products, but they do partake in fish and seafood. Regardless of whatever you want to call yourself um, in this life, if you are making an, an effort to live in a way that's best for your health, that is gonna cause you to live a long and prosperous life. If you go out of your way to chop vegetables on a daily basis, or once a week you're doing meal planning and preparation, then you're living the veg life. And if you'd like to live the veg life, please log on to veglife.tv.